welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, a quick question for you all. Have you ever secretly wished that you could learn to stay calm and change how you react in stressful situations and learn how you can find a better flow state and optimize your mental efficiency? Or do you think, hey, I am what I am. It's too late for me to change. (laughs) Because I confess, if you asked me those same three questions three weeks ago, I would have said yes to them all. But recently, I had an opportunity to check out a brain training device that pretty much you strap to your head. It monitors your brain waves. And it taught me so much about myself. And the fact that when I think I'm relaxed, actually, I still have a pretty busy brain. But I guess recording 10 podcasts a week and writing 7 to 10 articles a week, maybe that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. But having learned that Focuscom has come out an innovation lab in Harvard, I had to find out more. And Max Nulon, the president of BrainCo USA, the brain computer interface company, he's going to be joining me on the podcast today. And Focuscom, as I mentioned, that's one of the company's verticals that uses neurofeedback to help users train and optimize their brain. So I want to learn more about that today and how neuroplasticity means that your brain is always capable of change and it's within your control. But how can you do that? What is the role of the technology? These are just a few of the things that I'm going to explore with you today. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to the US where you can join me and Max Nulon in conversation about biofeedback tech and much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Max. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I am the president of a brain machine interface company called BrainCo, which was incubated in the Harvard Innovation Lab. And we develop all different types of brain machine interface or brain computer interface technologies from the prosthetic space to the education industry and also in the mental wellness and mental performance space with our product called Focus Calm, which I believe uh, you have one of those. I do indeed. And I cannot thank you enough for sending it over to me. It's quite revealing, to be honest with you, and uh, incredibly enlightening. And I am excited to talk about it in a little bit more detail with you. But before I do, I've got to ask, can I take you back in time? Can you remember where your passion for technology came from or the moment that put you on the path you're on today and and how you got involved with brain interface technologies? Because there's got to be a story there, right? Yes. Well, I would say my passion in technology probably started with video games, like very, like a lot of uh, young people. And that intersected with my interest in the brain and mind through a few different formative experiences when I was younger. Um, I was really interested in martial arts for my whole childhood uh, and learned a lot about the physical practices and also the mental practices that are associated with martial arts. And there's a motif in martial arts of mastering your mind or mastering yourself in order to achieve these incredible physical abilities I think you can see that really clearly in those old, older Kung Fu movies where the the masters are flying around and running up walls and doing all these flips. Yeah. And the sentiment is if you can master yourself, then there's uh, something on the other side as it relates to a sense of peace and calm and also uh, physical prowess. So I was I was interested in this trend and started studying psychology and, and cognitive science in my undergrad. And of course, growing up in the culture I did in the United States, where technology is such a big part of everything we do, I gravitated towards being curious about if there was some way we could apply technology in a new way to help people develop these abilities or these skills of being focused, of being calm, and how that might relate to everyday well-being, how that might relate to elite performers or how that might relate to just understanding ourselves at a deeper level absolutely love that and i was a big fan of the kung fu movies back in the day as well it was like kind of sunny chiba and bruce lee back in my day who who are your heroes around there yeah so certainly certainly uh bruce lee um also loved jackie chan the old old movies he did in the 70s were really really great we would get the 
dubbed versions from Blockbuster and I would rewatch the same movie like five or ten times. Um, and I, I like his approach to, to entertainment. One, he's an incredible martial artist in those movies, but also you know, his humor and the way that uh, he, he um, takes us through his stories, I think, is, is really impressive. But yeah, a lot of a lot of old kung fu movies for sure. Love it, absolutely love it. And of course, here in 2022, we're here to talk about Focus Calm because it is one of the company's verticals that uses neurofeedback to help users train and optimize their brains. But can you can you share the story behind Focus Calm and also the problems that you set out to solve with this technology? Because as you said, it started in the innovation labs in Harvard. But uh, what kind of problems did you originally want to set out before you even thought about technology? The idea was to understand the human brain better yeah. and what might be possible if we got uh, a way to measure what's going on, some, a way to measure what's typically invisible and make it visible. What, what would be possible? So we developed a platform, a headband that passively detects your brain activity. So your brain is constantly giving off electrical signals. And the headband is using EEG technology, which is the same technology that you see being used in sleep studies. Or if you've ever seen a picture where someone has a bunch of wires coming off their head, um, it's used to measure brain activity. It's the same technology, just wireless and really sleek and easy to use, especially if you don't have a, a neuroscience background. Anyone can use this. And with that platform, we were discovering different research applications learning more about the brain, what made sense, what people wanted. And around 2020, we were thinking to ourselves, what big problem can we help people with? And we figured out that a really great fit for this technology would be teaching people the skills of being focused and calm. And what happened a few months after that? Well, the pandemic started to happen and we realized this, this might be a bigger opportunity than we originally thought. Everyone needs more focus and more calm, particularly in that moment. So we started to develop the platform with this angle. And really interestingly, at the same time, uh, we had been working with this group that trains Formula One race car drivers, and they were using our headband and technology in a really unique way to teach these high level athletes to be calm under pressure. So we extended beyond just simple relaxation, uh, simple focus techniques and brought in this angle of teaching people to apply these skills when they matter most. For an athlete, that might mean game day. For everyone else, that's dealing with the, the stress of the world. And all these new concepts and ideas starting started to come together through this combination of neuroscience and existing and well-proven methodologies like meditation. And we combine them in this unique way to offer Focus Calm to people who wanted to train their brain to be more focused and more calm. And before we started recording today, I was giving this a try, and I, I consider myself a very calm guy anyway, but the, the big thing, I, I'm one of the, the kind of people that struggle to switch my brain off, and I think anyone that spends a lot of time on devices will have that exact same problem. And, and what struck me was when I was just kind of relaxing, lying back, I could see the impact and how that figure was rising to a relaxation mode. As soon as I reach for a phone, if I'm reading or my mind's just drifting, I could see instantly the impacts that was having on my brain. And it was quite enlightening for myself. So can you tell me more about how thanks to neuroplasticity that our brains are always capable of change and it's always within our control? Because I think very often we think that there's nothing we can do about it, but but there is a way, isn't there? That's such a huge and important concept for people to really grok, yeah. which is their brain is always changing and adapting. And you have say over how it does that and what outcomes you will experience. Yeah. For example, it's easier to understand that if I continue to lift weights, my muscles will get stronger and things will feel lighter because now my muscles are stronger. The same thing is true for physical skills as it is for mental skills. If you practice these things, your brain will get stronger, so to speak, in a particular way, and things will feel lighter because you have 
improved your skill of relaxation or improved your skill of focus. Um, and the thing that you experienced is really interesting, which is that those changes happen quickly, yeah. particularly with the way that we're measuring brain activity. A simple shift in attention from relaxation to maybe getting a little too busy with our mind, you can see on your, your iPhone or your Android. And the way we display it is a really simple score from zero to 100, where 100 means your brain looks really calm and relaxed. And a lower score means your mind looks a little busy. And just doing what you did, you get this aha moment of, right, when I do this, my brain will get more active. Or if I try this instead, my brain will get more calm. Yeah. And it really ties back to that main point that you are in the driver's seat and you can change your brain. It really did. And it surprised me because, ironically, I consider myself quite calm. And my wife is, let me say, a little bit more feisty and fiery than I am. But she put it on and she she managed to get into a relaxed relaxed state very quickly and maintain that whereas my head must be much much busier and i'm easily distracted and just to be able to see that and the differences between the two of us it it's incredibly fascinating but as a, an ex-it guy i'm always uh curious i want to take a look under the hood on, on how it is able to do all this so can you walk me through how focus calm quantifies your brain state so you can measure that brain activity and ultimately learn to adjust to it Certainly. So we have the basics down, right? Your brain is giving off electrical activity. The headband is passively reading that electrical activity, kind of like a heart rate monitor for your brain. And the sensors are picking up all these different signals every single second. And we've developed a machine learning model to give you a score based on how your brain activity in any given moment compares to our model of a really super relaxed brain or a very active brain. And we built this model by collecting hundreds of samples of people doing specific activities in the lab. So we know when they are very, very likely to be in a relaxed state or very, very likely to be in a not relaxed state. And we build these models to compare your brain activity uh, against these scores of how relaxed or how active your mind looks. And that score is fluctuating every second based on what you're doing. And the experience that you and your wife had is really interesting because it gives you a way to kind of test your assumptions yeah. about what is actually true for you when it comes to getting into these different states. And you mentioned a moment ago about the work you've been doing with motorsport uh, drivers there to try and keep themselves calm and, and, and get to that state. And I would imagine there'd be a lot of people listening, whether they're being healthcare, they could be a surgeon, for example, or somebody just about to go do public speaking and they find themselves getting very anxious and nervous and want to improve that side of things. So for anyone listening that this really resonates with that wants to stay calm or change some of their behaviours or change how they react in stressful situations – how will this device help them? We take people through a three-step process. So even if you have no experience in meditation, no experience in any of this stuff, uh, we'll take care of you through this three-step process called Learn, Practice, Challenge. So in Learn, Practice, Challenge, the first step is we will teach you some techniques through the, the iPhone or Android app taught by meditation teachers or breathing experts or sports psychologists. They will teach you different strategies, tips and tricks that you can do to calm your mind or to focus your mind. And while you're learning these strategies, you're also seeing your focus calm score, that zero to 100 score. And you can see how these tips, how these strategies, how these meditations and lessons are affecting your brain in real time. So we'll teach you those, we'll teach you those skills. In the second phase, we have different games you play that help you strengthen or help you practice the skills that you just learned. And in these games, you might make a campfire grow bigger and bigger the calmer your mind gets. And if your mind starts to get active, then the campfire will shrink. And you're seeing this happen in real time. Or you might have a race car that you're making go faster and faster the more you calm your mind. This real-time feedback based on your brain activity is called neurofeedback. It's a basically a closed-loop learning system to help you understand when you're in that calm state and what you can do to stay there longer. Then the third step is really interesting. The third step, the challenge phase, will give you different brain games, things that people might 
be a little familiar with, like a reaction speed test, a memory test, decision-making test, to see if we can activate your brain a little bit, have you complete that task, but at the same time, ask you to remain calm. So we want you to have the highest focus calm score, the most relaxed brain you can have while you're completing this cognitively demanding task. And the reason why it's called challenge is, this, this phase is called challenge is it's quite difficult to do. But you know what? The world is demanding of us. The world requires us to be quote unquote on a lot of the day. And what we want to give people is the ability to be calm and relaxed and focused while they need to be applying their executive, what's called their executive functions, all this decision making and processing speed and all these different things we have to do throughout our day. So through this process of learning to relax your mind from experts, practicing and strengthening your ability to be calmer for longer through the, the neurofeedback games, and then applying these skills in, in slightly challenging ways through the brain games, we're actually helping people transfer these skills into more real world settings. One thing we always say is meditation is great. It's a fantastic way to calm your mind. But sitting on your meditation cushion is very different than being out in the world. And so how do we help people transfer those skills? Well, it's through creating these challenge games so that they can learn how to be calm under pressure. And now it's kind of full circle. You can see how that would apply to athletes. You can see how that would apply to people with busy jobs or stressful lives or people who want to improve their their mental fitness or their mental skills in these ways. And I think the events of the last two years has, has helped everyone start to take their mental health, well-being, etc., much more seriously. And the big aha moment for me was very often if you hear about people meditating or taking things like that seriously, there's some some people may say, "Oh, it's a bit fluffy, though." What evidence is there that it actually makes a difference at all? But the aha moment for me was putting this uh, head headband on there and seeing the evidence in front of me through neurofeedback back and just that realization that hey even though i thought i was relaxing and and my mind wasn't busy it, it wasn't at all but there were steps i could do to improve it and i could see the evidence that that that's where the magic happens right delivering that 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 aha moment for your users i would imagine absolutely the first time someone goes ah i do have control over my brain yeah that's really that's really special for sure and do you have any examples of how you've helped anybody optimize their mental efficiency, maybe provide a before and after picture and the kind of evidence that they had there? Certainly. So in addition to working with all the elite level athletes, we also work with lots of different people from all walks of life. And we've done research studies with teachers, uh, with different companies in workplace wellness settings. Uh, we're doing a study right now with a group of nurses. And what we see are consistent results across our studies, which are which are are these. If you practice focus calm for about 20 sessions, you will very likely see statistically significant improvements in your well-being, reductions in your anxiety, and drops in feeling of burnout. And the reason is through these practices, you're gaining a new skill. And just like the analogy we we're using about if you lift weights, your muscles get stronger, things feel lighter. Well, when you practice these mental skills and you practice the skill of focus and calm, when you move throughout your day, everything else will feel lighter mentally to you as well. So what we have found is in these studies with all these different types of people, 20 sessions is the magic number to seeing these results. And each of these sessions lasts about 15 minutes. So when you open Focus Calm, we have these guided experiences that will take you through the learn practice challenge process you play these games, you learn these skills, you see your results. And what we found is the more people practice, just like any skill, the more people practice, the better they get at being calm for longer. And the thing that really stands out for me, though, is you've just mentioned athletes, teachers, nurses, and it's from a wide variety of, back, variety of backgrounds. But everybody's got the same challenges with that busy mind and flirting with burnout, etc. And I'm curious, I mean, this is just an opinion, really, but is it being constantly bombarded with notifications and information and staring down at our phones. Is that what's kind of got us to this place, do you think? I think there's a lot of layers. So if we want to kind of wax uh, philosophical for just a moment, yeah. I think there's there's personal layers. 
uh, from our habits. There's prior experiences that we carry with us. There's cultural influences and pressures that we take on and assume. And all these direct our behaviors and our feelings and emotions and our thoughts in different ways, sometimes helpful, sometimes not. And unless you take the time to examine and figure out who you want to be or what you want to take seriously or not take seriously, you're kind of uh, at the whim of the the ocean that you're swimming in or that's kind of moving you around. So, you know, that's that's something that we're trying to remedy is give people tools or a toolbox for them to learn about themselves and train their minds so that they can be more centered. Because to your point, there's so many influences in our environment that demand our attention or create stress. And if you uh, are living in an environment like that, if you feel like your life has a lot of stressors around you and you don't take some sort of practice or some time to de-stress or let those things go, preferably every day, then they're going to accumulate. It's kind of like a uh, if you get all these things stuck to you and you don't take time to shake them off or to let them go, it's going to accumulate. And the thing that we're we're providing is a way, a really interesting, scientific, measurable way for people to let go of that stress and to practice these techniques. And if we were to take a look at the tech and the science that makes all this possible, I appreciate it's probably not too much you can share, but is there anything you, you can share at what makes all this possible? Yeah, so... Here's the interesting thing. EEG technology or electroencephalography has been around for a hundred years. It's been used in hospitals and research for decades um, because it's such a safe way to measure the electrical activity of someone's brain. And again, it's a passive measure. It's like a heart rate monitor for your brain. So it's been used in, in research and science for decades. So there's a lot of validation for this type of technology. And what we've done is just made it really simple and easy to use. That's what we hear a lot from our users. They go, I didn't think that something like this could be so easy to use. And we have people with very limited technology backgrounds, certainly with limited uh, or no neuroscience background, or sometimes not even a meditation background or any kind of whiff of what we're doing. And they can use it because the user interface is so direct, direct and straightforward. Um, so the, the, the technology it's been really well validated. We've made it easy to use. We've created a really accurate algorithm that goes above and beyond what, what you typically see in the neurofeedback space uh, to give people their focus calm score. And then on top of that, created a really user-friendly experience uh, to give people this type of self-discovery and brain training. And I'm curious, there's so many different use cases here, but who are you aiming the device at and what applications do you see this useful for in, let's say, workplace wellness and, and leadership spaces too? So Focus Calm is a toolbox for yeah. people to learn about themselves and train their, train their minds. And you're so right about it, having all these different applications. And in order to make it useful, we split up our training into different use cases so we have specific programs for people who want to sleep better, who want to deal with stress at work, who want to wind down after a long day, uh, or who want to start their day with a specific intention and focus to have a really positive and, and happy and productive day. So the, the good thing is that the underlying mechanism of change is similar across these use cases. And what we customize is the learning, the teaching, the different type of game, uh, the different type of executive function that we're training, given the, the outcome that someone wants. And the way that we see it being used is a lot of people with a existing meditation practice will use this as a way to measure what's going on in their brain while they meditate. If people don't have this type of experience, then they may use some of our guided programs and learn from our teachers on how to calm their brain and play the games. Uh, or, you know, we have our athletes, so we'll use it before or after training or sometimes right before an important game to get in the right headspace. But the underlying mechanism is if I can get my mind into the appropriate mindset, given the situation that I'm in or about to go into, then I'm going to have an advantage. Or I'm going to have a benefit. Um, and that's what we've done is design these different experiences for different types of people. 
Well, it's been a huge pleasure chatting to you today, Max. And we started the podcast talking about your origin story, but now we've come full circle. I want to look to the future. Some of the biggest names in business, VC funding and tech, have either been guests on this show or listened to the podcast. So the question I want to ask you now is hopefully we can do something for you. Is there a person that you would love to have a private breakfast or lunch with and why? Because he or she might just listen to this and we'll send it out in the ether and who knows what we can manifest and make happen here? I'm going to really swing for the fences and say Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, is someone who um, I really aspire to be like. I think the change that he's made in Microsoft and the mindset shift that he's helped the company achieve uh, has clearly driven tremendous business outcomes. But I also believe, based on his position, has changed the minds of a lot of people that work within the company and the broader business world and the broader world in general, showing how focusing on your mindset and how you think about the world and how you think about yourself can be good for you personally, can be good for your team, can be good for your company and the ripple effect that that has and the way that he approaches business and the world and life is is someone who I really respect. Uh, and I would love to have <laughs> sit down and have lunch or a, a meal with him and, and pick his brain about how he thinks about the world. Uh, so that's that's my choice. Wow, what a fantastic answer. And I love how you've swung for the fences out. I'm going to send that out into the ether. Who knows what will happen? But if anything does, all I ask is you come back and let us know. But before I let you go, for anyone listening, wanting to find out more information about Focus Call, maybe see some videos in action or just the kind of uh, different ways that it might be able to help them, what's the best starting point for everything? You know, If you want to learn more about your brain or more about this technology that helps you teach you about your brain or these skills of Focus and Calm, go to focuscom.com f-o-c-u-s-c-a-l-m.com and we have some more information for you there well as i said first of all a big thank you for sending that one of those over to me the big thing that i've learned from the conversation and sampling it is your brain is always capable of change and it's within your control and Having your brain state in a way that you can measure your brain activity and most importantly learn to adjust it is incredibly powerful. And it is early days for me, but I will be doing a video and sharing that with everybody listening too so they can see my takeaways. And if anybody out there uses it, I'd also love to to hear anything that uh, any insights you'd like to share. But more than anything, just a big thank you, Max, for taking the time to come on here and share the story behind it all. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, we covered a lot there, didn't we? And as I said a few moments ago, I'd love to hear more from you. If you're considering checking this out or you already have one, what do you like? What do you not like? What excites you? I'd love to hear it all because you hear from me. You've heard from Max today, but I want to hear your voice too. So please email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn at Neil C. Hughes. I'm starting to put a few little snippets of the videos that I do on TikTok and YouTube as well. So all you need to do is look for me at Neil C. Hughes. I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. And the email address is techblogwriteroutlook.com and website techblogwriter.co.uk. So let's keep this conversation going. And even if you've got nothing to share on this particular episode, Join me again tomorrow because I've got another cracker lined up for you. But a big thank you as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Stranger.